everybody, Michelle Houghton here. We have a new coloring video and in honor of Valentine's Day coming up, I thought I would do a heart. Um, you saw some moose with a big heart last week and I'm doing another Anne Corbier Scott printable this week. This is one that I actually did um, part of the printable printable on another video I did the skein of yarn and now I'm going to do they have this this is another part of that same it's um, the joy sand printable and Corbier Scott designs and I'm going to do some Copic on it but then I'm also going to do some colored pencil on top of it so I'm actually coloring on a very lightweight watercolor paper um, this one is by Canson so if you're interested, that's what I'm doing. You'll find that watercolor paper bleeds pretty excessively. And so you do have to do, be pretty cautious with how you're laying down color. So I have not worked with this particular watercolor paper before. So it'll be a little bit of an experiment with my markers. I will also tell you that um, if you decide to use your Copic markers on a watercolor paper or anything like this, that's a super, super absorbent paper, you will notice that it sucks the ink out of your markers pretty fast. So be aware of that. So you're not surprised if your markers kind of hit that, ooh, drying up a little bit faster than you'd like them to. So I am gonna hit a few of these kind of in and out spots with my darkest red, which in this case is R59. So what I'm trying to do is find some of those spots where it's coming out from underneath another piece. And I don't, I know I'm gonna lighten this up so it's a brighter red. I'm not worried about the shape of the heart. I'm looking for the in and out of some of the yarn itself. So where it's coming out from underneath other pieces. And I'm gonna emphasize that further when I get to my um, colored pencils at the very end. So, but you can see what I'm trying to do to start is I'm trying to hit these spots where I can see the yarn coming out from under these other little pieces. And some of these will tuck back even tighter as they're getting into these little corners. And those are the ones I'll try to focus on when I get to my colored pencil. Because there's quite a few of these. And I don't necessarily have to do them all with this color. I could use my next color in the row. I probably should have thought that through a little bit better. So that I have some differing layers here. But that's okay. I'm good with this. So we'll kind of go through. I'm keeping it extremely loose. You can probably tell that this is very fast. And I think I'll do this kind of this one section along here, but then I am gonna go ahead and switch colors. Even though the watercolor is super absorbent, it is gonna dry a little faster, so I need to be aware of that. But I also wanna make sure I give it every like opportunity I can to stay a little more damp. And if I went through the entire heart, I might have a little bit tr of trouble blending this back together. So, but you can kind of see a few of these spots where it's gonna get a little bit complicated about what's on top and what's underneath. So I probably, we'll see how this looks and then if I need to readjust on the center and side too, I will. And I might do the same thing I did on the last yarn piece that I did and that maybe, let's see how long this little section takes. This is an R46. Let's see how long this little section takes and then we can kind of decide I guess you don't get to decide. I will decide if we need to speed up the next 
kind of portion of coloring as I finish the heart. And I'll give you a little background music if we decide to do that. So what I'm trying to do, watercolor paper is going to blend really, really easily because it's so soft. So I'm trying to keep my touch really light. It's not about like scrubbing those edges really. It's about touching the edge of that darker color, softening that and pulling it into that highlight area. So see, this is where I probably should have left like these guys. They're a layer down, but they're not three or four layers down. So I probably should have left this layer a little bit lighter. That's okay. Work in progress, right? And when I don't do any kind of thought process through before I start laying colors down, this is the type of thing that I discover. It's like, well, if I'd done a test run first, I would have realized that with all of these layers, I'm going to have to do a little bit more thoughtful placement with that first dark color so that I don't end up with everything super, super dark. And I'm looking at this and this is blending again so easily that I think I'm going to make one more little adjustment to, I was planning on using four reds and I think I can skip another one and jump to my lightest. I'm going to hit the edges of this guy. So it's going to be really this kind of deep red heart of yarn. Don't always go for like super kind of cliche colors, but I felt like I haven't done a lot of reds in recent history, so why not? Reds can be your friend, believe it or not. I know a lot of you out there are going, I hate reds, they're so hard. They can be more difficult, I'm gonna give you that, but they also can be so gorgeous. These little edges. There we go. Okay. Oh, missed one down here. There we go. So I was going to use an R08 and an R06. Let's see, or R05, sorry. It's really almost an orange. Kind of that yellow red. The R0s really lean away from the red family. And basically what they are, it's a very warm red and they kind of cross over with those yellow reds. So if you don't like the look of this, you could, instead of R05, you could aim for like an R, um, Two four would absolutely work, probably a little bit more in that red range. Um, gonna give you a cooler red, which sometimes is what our eyes are anticipating when we think red. And so you might be happier with that result. This is really gonna warm it up. The other thing I could do is as I come back, I could cool that further down again with, um, with colored pencils if I want as well, because this is definitely kind of changing the whole tone of this. So we'll kind of play around. I like the look of it, but it definitely pulls it away a little bit from that red. The nice part of this is I can go right into that highlight, push both directions, and it just kind of smushes right in on itself, which is 
always. Nice when it makes it that easy. I could even come back. Let's do this. We'll add a little something, something on top of that. I bet that will work. I'm looking at some of these spots and realizing I should have put a little bit more of a darker color. That's why you're seeing a couple spots that are getting unloved. I hope I didn't jump off the screen there. Sorry if I did. Back on, back on. Now, if you look closely at my edges, there's a chance I'm going to scoot off in a couple places. I'm trying to stay inside those lines, but I'm not going to worry too much. I'm pretty sure I'm going to fussy cut this out. If I don't, I can always do some sort of background that's going to... So this I know needs to go dark. Absolutely. I felt like this and this probably needs to have that deeper edge. So this is that R29 or 46. Sorry, 46 coming in from there. Okay. So I actually really do like the look of that, but it is fairly orange. So let's do this. Let's play with this a little bit, maybe on our tester. So our light color here is R05. And you can see even here, this is, I mean, it's very yellow red-esque. So what if we take an R43 and put it on top? So that is a lighter tone if you put it side by side. This is truly lighter, but it's a cooler tone. So if we go in and add that kind of over, it's very, very subtle. So you're not going to see a huge change on the video. I'm seeing a tiny change. It kind of tones it down one notch. So I might go through a few of these and add just a touch. Now I could do something even lighter, like an R20 or an R21, and that would actually brighten those up even further. But I feel like this is adding, cools it down just a little bit. We'll see as it dries if it stays that way. So yes or no, um, it's very, very, very subtle. Um, I'll show you as we do this next round, if I use this um, R43 instead of the R05, what that looks like. But let's go ahead and finish up the heart. And I think I will go ahead and speed this up so you guys can see it um, where I put stuff, but you don't have to listen to me babbling. You can listen to some fun music and you can have that pause at the end. And then maybe we'll go ahead and put a background in. How about that? So let me speed up, get this part done, and then we'll come back and do the coloring for the background.
All right. So one of the things I said I was going to do was to use colored pencil to push some of these areas even further back. So what I am looking for are the areas. So some of these pieces of yarn are visibly on top. So this guy is completely on top, not crossing under another one. This one is completely on top. And then you have kind of that second layer of these pieces that are somewhat underneath, but definitely not the lowest pieces. So with my colored pencil for me, what I'm looking for is the pieces that are at the base layer, like the ones that are all the way back. So not only is this piece under this one, it's under this, which is under this, which is under this, which is under this. So I know this one is going even further in. So I have picked, and I don't have it sharpened as much as I should, because it is easier when your colored pencil is like crazy sharp. But I just want to add a little punch right back up underneath here. And I'm doing this with a color that's pretty similar to my R59, but then I'm going to actually punch it back one more time. So let me show you what that looks like with this first. And you can kind of see the difference from section to section. And again, remember everything I do on Copic in the craft room, you guys make it your own. So if this is not a look that you like and you don't own color pencils, you don't want to go there. Obviously you can do the Copic portion. You can do different kinds of markers. Just use those ideas and go from there. You don't need to, you absolutely don't need to duplicate how I do everything. In fact, I would encourage you not to. Um, this is not about copying what I am doing. So I'm going to try one more little push. That's kind of what I was hoping for. This I'm keeping right up against those corners. And you guys can kind of see, hopefully, when I get this little section done, what that looks like in comparison. So for me, it just adds another dimension of pushing a little bit further back some of these dark areas. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to come through and kind of pick and choose. So this guy is going to get pushed back. This little tiny corner is. So in this half, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this little triangle, then this one and this one. I could debate on that one. I might push that one back too and that one. So I've got one, two, three little triangles and one, two, three sections. Over here, I might just do right in here on the center and then one, two, three, four. This one doesn't have quite the weaving in and out that this side does, but I definitely have four sections that are below her. So again, I'm gonna fast forward. You can kind of see what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna start this one, if you're truly curious, this is P, um, it's Prismacolor, and this is Dark Purple 931. This one is Indigo Blue 901. So I'm doing a little bit with the Dark Purple, and then I'm doing a little bit with the Indigo Blue. All right. And I'll do the three triangles, three sections, and then these four sections, and this one section. Then we'll come back one more time and maybe do a little background. Maybe some, I don't know, blues or mint greens. We might do a little experimenting on here, but do something really simple so it goes nice and fast. Okay.
All right, so we've got kind of a finished heart. I don't know if you guys are curious ever about what's on the back, but this is this lightweight watercolor paper, and that's what that looks like on the back. Obviously, the area where I kind of scrubbed um, with that lightest color is, is popping through. It kind of leaves a neat look to it. Anyway, this is what that looks like choosing a background color we can go a couple different routes we could do something that's more complementary complementary which would be opposite on the color wheel so for a red it's actually greens a cooler red is going to lean toward let's see if we go up to it's actually going to go yellow green um, and a warmer red goes toward blue green. I'm wondering though if blue green wouldn't be better for this anyway if we wanted to go that route. sure that's really I want it really really soft so if I'm wondering even if something more similar in color would be more pleasing or But that's an option. What if we did some violets? That's a prettier color. I like that better. So that's V01. But I'm wondering. I know B04 is going to be like. Whoa. There's kind of a, a gap, if you haven't noticed. Let's see. We could keep it really, really pale. trying to stay away from the blue violets. Is this more? There we go. Okay. So let's do this. We're going to start super, super light. This is a V. I mean, you can barely see this on the page. And I'm not even going to go very far. I'm going to go within about maybe a quarter inch of the edge. So I'm going to have sections. So it's going to come down and across. That's what I am kind of wetting down with this V quadruple zero. It's barely their color. And then this is V01. And I did this on my mousse last week, but I did not pre-wet it. So especially on this watercolor paper, hopefully you can see this happening. As I touch that marker down, that ink immediately spreads. So it's a very subtle effect. And it immediately, not only because of the watercolor paper, but because I've already now kind of pre-wet it. And then I'm going to put a few, that was V01, and then this is V12. Get those in bigger, closer. And then I am going to do one more pass with the V quadruple. 
And you could leave it more spotty. I think really, again, artistic license. You get to pick. And I'll show you with our colored pencils. Then one little optional. Now something I am noticing here, and I noticed it when I tried to test on my little tab there, my ink from my printer is actually not sitting tight on this <laughs> paper. So I'm going to have to be very aware of that. I think the dark reds that are up against the lines are hiding that from us, from me, from you. But I'm noticing as I hit a couple of these lines with my lighter inks that I am getting some smearing of my black printer lines. So be aware. I'm going to add a few more. I feel like that washed it out way too much when I washed over it. So I'm going to come back and add a few back in. few of the V12. And if the sections are smaller, like if you trimmed yours even tighter, you could do more than one section. But I really want that ink to stay wet that first layer. So these, because they're so small, see I just pulled a little bit of black out there, I think. So I'm going to just be super cautious. And again, I'm not worried about it getting on my marker. I know that that will not stop the ink from flowing, but I'd rather not have kind of a gray streak across my pretty page either. So Big dots. And I love that Anne's heart isn't totally even. I love the fact that this guy's a little bit shorter and it's handmade. It's a skein of yarn. It's more real. Yay for lovely handmade art. Okay. So. I like the look of this. One thing I can do is I'm going to, this is the color I want, I'm going to go cooler. Not quite there either. Testing. That's going to be too dark. I bet one of these is going to be perfect. Or do I want to go with. Hmm. Thinking I'm going to start with this, and if I need the gray, I will add it. But I'm going to come in. right up against the little edge and I'm going to keep this to one side so I'll get it up right here and we'll figure that out in a second but I'm going to go all the way up this little side So see how this is kind of lower left? So then we're kind of looking for, okay, if the shadow's throwing that way, is there any place else this might? We might get a tiny little piece to the left up here, but thinner. And I'm trying to stay off of these like 
plain paper areas and we might get a sliver but since it's kind of above the heart you're not going to get a whole lot there go in with this gray right up against so this one's not going to come out near as far kind of pop that forward there we go so on that part I used Parma violet which is 1008 1008 and slate gray which is 936 if anyone is interested all right art of yarn can add it to a card, create a tag. Anyways, just a fun coloring, some different stuff in there today with the watercolor paper, with some colored pencils. I hope you enjoyed. Everybody, make a card for someone you love, no matter who, it doesn't have to be a partner. A kid, a friend, a mom, a dad, a partner, make a card for someone you love and send it. Make a point of it, try to, and even maybe make, set yourself a goal. I'm going to send five of them this year. Send out some love in this world. All right, everybody. Go forth, have fun, and have a happy, colorful day.